Good morning, everyone. How you guys doing today? You know, uh, there, uh, that's a loaded question because some of you guys are doing great and some of you guys are going through a tough time. But there's a time in your life that you just got to say, I'm doing great because I believe greatness is in my future. That's called faith. Don't get stuck in your problem. You can, there's a lot of people that they went through a tough season in their lives and they never recovered. And it's not that they couldn't recover. Their mind got stuck in that moment. You still are still going through the abuse. You're still suffering from the separation. You're st that was, it was a tragedy to happen in your life. You never recovered. You never were healed and you never moved on. This is, we're here to become healthy again. Jesus, when he would go into towns and cities, sometimes he would heal everybody. And healing comes in different ways. We could be physically, physically healed, good. We could be relationally healed, that's another way. We could also be, we could also be emotionally and mentally healed, and that's another way. But we serve a God that saves. And that word salvation can be a generic term that we use, and we don't even know what it means. Save from what? The word save means this, to be made whole again. It means to be free. And that means free, I'm free to do whatever I want. Maybe you're free to think you could do whatever you want, but you're not free to be happy. You're not free to dream. You're not free to do what's right. And you say, well, I can stop any time doing that destructive, self-destructive behavior. So why don't you stop now? Why don't you stop being angry and abusive and doubtful and fearful and anxious and depressed and suicidal? Why, why don't you stop? You know why? You're not free. But today, we could be set free. There's one that could heal us from whatever the healing you need. And there's one that can save us from whatever you need salvation from. And let's give him the credit. He's the Savior. Come on. The doctor couldn't save you. Come on. It's not your boyfriend coming back that's going to save you. It's not your girlfriend. It's not your marriage being restored that's going to save you. There's one name to call on for supernatural breakthrough. And it's Jesus. I love it. There's no confusion here. People say, you're kind of narrow-minded, aren't you? I go, no. I'm specifically directed. I mean, I think that's fair that God would specifically direct me to the answer. Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus, the Word of God says this. There's no other name to call on. There's no other name, so stop trying to call other names. There's one name to call on to be saved, to be made whole, to be set free, to be born again, to have you receive eternal life. There's one address, and his name is Jesus. I love that. Let's be logical about it. That means, that means if I want to give you, and I, if I want you to come to my house, hopefully I give you my address. Well, where do you live? San Bernardino. I go, but there's a lot of houses in San Bernardino. I know. Figure it out. Well, what road? Many roads lead to my house. You must not want me in your house. That sounds like you're beating around the bush. And God says, no, I want you in my house. I want you saved. I want your life transformed. So I'm not going to give you many ways to get to my house. I'm going to give you the address. It's J-E-S-U-S. -S, the resurrection, the life, and the one Savior. I'm not here to offer you religion. I'm here to offer you God. And his name is Jesus. Isn't that great? Come on. That there's a real name to call on. Um. Sabrina, I know you were here today. You told me you're here. Where are you, Sabrina? There you are, Sabrina. You know, I, I, I met Sabrina to, um, yesterday. I mean, not, I mean, Wednesday of last week. It hasn't been a week. And it was a tragic way I met her. Uh, I was driving into work early Wednesday morning. And as I, I was driving in, 
it was probably, I don't know, near seven or something in the morning. And I'm driving in on Wednesday morning to this campus. And while I'm, it's right around, right around uh, across the street from Walmart on the street hallmark. Uh, I, I'm, coming across, I'm coming on to an accident. And I didn't, I didn't know how bad the accident was until I just pulled up real slow and I looked over and there was a young man sitting in the street, bleeding to death. So I you turned my car around and I parked it in the Lowe's parking lot and Sabrina was there by herself with the, uh, with the, with the person that was there dying and the person that the motorcycle, the guy that was dying was on a motorcycle and he hit a car and the guy that was in the car was there. The person's dying in the, on the streets there in Sabrina. So I stop, the paramedics aren't there, nobody's there, the fire department's not there, the police aren't there, no one's there. It looks like he's, li he's dead. I, but I got out of the car said hi to Sabrina for a second. Then I went up to the young man, knelt down, went, knelt down, talked to him in his ear. I began to speak life. Today's your day. You can receive forgiveness. You can be saved. God is here. He loves you. He died for your sins. If you call on Jesus, you can receive eternal life right now. And I began to pray and give him the gospel right there. As I finished praying with him, the police come, say, get away from the body. And, but when I came up to the young man, he wasn't dead. He was breathing. Everybody thought he was gone. He was breathing really strong. Well, I, I, gave, I prayed with Sabrina as well. And I, because I go, when you're going through something like that, you could have nightmares. It could be a tough day. So I prayed with her that she wouldn't have nightmares, that, that God's comfort would be with her. Well, Sabrina texts me. It was probably an hour or two later. And she goes, you won't believe it. That young man was my cousin. And I didn't even know. And then she texts me and he said he died. That was his last breath. And I stopped because I could help. I'm not a paramedic, but I could give eternal life. I could give him love. That's the reason I stopped. Well, there was a young man that his girlfriend comes to church. And the reason I'm sharing this, because you never know when you're thinking right, how one act of love, not trying to, you're not trying to be famous, you're just trying to follow Jesus, could lead to other people having faith. Well, there was a young man, this girlfriend's been coming to this church for a while, and her boyfriend works at the same place as Anthony. That was a young man that died. And that Wednesday, it's, it's Wednesday night, I, Anthony passed away in the morning. That Wednesday night, he tuned in online to our service about the end times. He watched the whole thing for the first time in his life. And he heard me talking about this young man that died, but he didn't know it was his best friend. He goes in on the, on, he goes in on the night shift, graveyard shift. They have a meeting with all the managers and they say, we regret to inform you, Anthony passed away in a motorcycle accident after he left work yesterday. So now this young man is saying, I just heard that teaching. And he was talking about my friend. And this is what he said. I know there's a God now. And he said this, I just can't believe how loving he is to not let my friend die all alone on the street. Now, it goes deeper than that. He starts sharing the video throughout the plant. And when I got the notice, at least 80 people from his plant watched the whole video. There's a revival starting at the plant. One of the managers called me up to, this week, called me up and said, manager called me up and said, it's changed my life. 
I just bought two Bibles. I realized I was way off. I, wasn't, I was so wrapped up in life, I forgot about what life is really about. And I just realized there's still people out there that really care and really love people. Come on, come on how many know God wants to do some great things in your life? I talked this week to Anita, which is Anthony's son, I mean mother. And she said, I want to thank you for praying for my son and being there in his last moments of life here on this earth. And she said this, I raised him in the church. He knew. He knew about Jesus. So I know this, that you being there was not a coincidence. God had an appointment for you to be there. Come on, God has a purpose for your life. All he needed to do is just recognize again, repent of his sins, call on Jesus, and Jesus doesn't need his arm twisted. He loves you, he wants to save you, and he wants to give you eternal life. Let's give the Lord a big hand because he's a good, loving God. And this is just the beginning of just, I want you to understand, it's just life. But when you're thinking right, you're being guided by God, and then one thing leads to another. And be careful, wrong thinking also will guide you to wrong choices and ruin your life. It's time to come to church, to get to know Jesus, and allow him to change our lives, change our thinking, and find our purpose, be healed, and then go out there and be a healer. Come on, all right. We don't need more division. We don't need more hate. Come on, we need some healers. Come on. But you got to be healed first. One more time. Let's give the Lord a big hand. Come on, let's step in. Step into your purpose. So today, we're going to start a series and, and we're going to talk about guaranteed growth. And we're going to begin to introduce you to this concept of growth. That means, and I, I'll say this, the greatest the greatest motivator in life is not money. The greatest motivator in life is a sense of accomplishment. That means you're seeing progress. And there's nothing more frustrating that a year from now you're still in the same place or maybe in a worse place. And what I've learned about life, either you're progressing or you're digressing. There's no neutral. And if you do life wrong, you'll find yourself, instead of growing and making progress, producing and being fruitful, you'll find yourself unproductive. You'll find yourself digressing. You'll find yourself more unhappy. And that's not what God wants for you. But if you don't do things right, don't expect right results. We're here to change. Come on, we're here to change. Don't preach to me. I'm trying to help you. Come on, I'm trying to help you. We're not here to justify our mess, be victims. We're here to allow God to take charge of our lives and start changing the way we're thinking so we can help somebody. Is that right? Come on, is that right? God created you to grow, cause, cause. I want you to get cause improvement, cause prosperity, cause advancement, a Christian should be in high demand everywhere. They should be saying, you're a believer? Oh, hey, here's the application. Let me give you a raise before you start. We've been looking for one of you guys because every time we hire one of you guys, our business gets better. We're more profitable. There's more peace in this place. There's more wisdom in this place. Uh, we need another one of you guys. Come on. How many of Christians should not be a burden? They should be a blessing. It's true. I'm going to show you how to grow. And all I want you to go into growth school. Say, say with me, growth school. And you're not going to grow if you can't even show up to school. Well, uh, I, I came once, I came Sunday. I know this is the beginning of growth school. Next Sunday is going to be another class. The next Sunday is going to be another class. Well, I don't feel like going. Well, that's your problem. You, you're, you're not committed to your own growth. 
Stop trying to look for a shortcut to your progress. Every progress that you're going to make in your life is going to come with a breakthrough and you're going to have to push through, allow yourself to become self-disciplined and commit yourself to a schedule that produces growth. Amen. Come on. How many understand? Come on. How many understand that you got to start setting yourself up? Show up every Sunday. Lead your family to a growth lifestyle. Show up every Sunday. Why do you go to church? This is where I grow. This is where I release bad thinking. This is where I look myself in the mirror, make adjustments. You guys, you're not here to judge others. You're here right now to improve yourself. Come on, to change your life. Stop, stop trying to judge everybody. I'm here for me. How many, how many are here to learn right now so you can become better and help somebody else out? I know I'm doing a little longer intro, but that's okay. We got, we got, all this, we got as long as we're living, and, and we got four or five weeks to dive into the subject. But I pray that you go to school, take notes. And remember, never, I'm going to give you another nugget, never listen to just gain knowledge. Always listen to apply. Knowing information doesn't change your life. It's knowing and applying it that changes your life. So learn to do, don't learn to learn. How many get that? Come on. Are you ready to adjust your lifestyle, adjust your thinking? Adjust your habits, adjust your schedule so you can start growing again. Come on, is there anybody here who wants to grow? Progress, 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 progress. I just hope, I hope my relationship works. Hope is not a strategy. Get some skill, apply it, and you're guaranteed to get results. How many understand you could succeed in any, come on, anything you put your hand to do when you're thinking right? How many believe, come on, there's a plan, there's a schedule, there's, a, there's wisdom, there's application, there's methods we could do this. That's why we have the word of God. Lord, we just thank you for allowing us to be here in this world. This, this world, you know, has a lot of problems. It's a mess. But I think there's, well, we know this, there's more demand for you than ever. Because we don't know where truth is anymore. We're struggling we're not sure what to think because our value system is like a moving target. Our morals are like a moving target. And we just thank you, Lord, that your truth doesn't move. It's absolute. And if we apply it, we can start getting your results. Father, help me to teach your people and help all of us to absorb, understand, and apply everything we're learning. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Are you ready to learn? Now you will be tested on this. So make sure you write it down. Test it, what do you mean? Life will test you. How many understand that? Define, I'm going to define what these two words, guaranteed growth. Say with me, guaranteed growth. I like the word guarantee because it means, it means this, for sure, certain definite, an assurance of a particular outcome, a promise. I want some guarantees in life. Life doesn't come with too many guarantees. But the word of God says that my word, God says, God says this, God says about his own word. My word does not return void. And what he means by that, it always accomplishes what I said it would accomplish. So it's guaranteed if you apply God's principles... In your life, you're guaranteed to get an outcome. The word of God is not prejudice. That means it works for every race, every society, for men and women, for black and white, for the poor and the rich. God is saying, apply my word and it's guaranteed to work. It's a promise. The word growth, guaranteed growth. Let's put these together. What we're saying is you're guaranteed to grow if you apply these principles. The word growth means increase in size. That means that whatever you're doing should be increasing under your management. It should be improving 
under your leadership. It'd be a shame that we're a church of 18 years and we still only have 30 people. Now, if you're a church of 18 years and you only have 30 people, this is what you might do. You might justify your non-growth and start saying something like this. I like small churches. No, you're just justifying your condition. God does, I want you to get this. Heaven grows when churches grow. The only, the only one that would agree that small, staying small, it's okay to start off small, but you should be working to grow it shouldn't stay small. The only one that would agree staying small, that staying small is good, is the devil. You guys understand that, right? Someone say growth. Growth means stage and development. It means growing, growth also means guaranteed maturity. That means that you should be maturing in the way you're thinking. Have you ever met an older person that still thinks like a young person, like older but still dumb. Like you haven't learned these basic lessons still. You haven't learned how to forgive still. You're still dealing with that teenage addiction still. You're still talking the way you used to talk when you were in high school. You're still wearing your Letterman jacket. Your best days of your life were in junior high? What a shame that nothing great has happened. You have not grown. You have not matured. It means expansion. It means to be fruitful, multiply, to produce, to prosper, to succeed, to build up and improve. How many want guaranteed improvement, guaranteed success, guaranteed prosperity, guaranteed multiplication, Expansion. We're a church that's expanding, and we should be expanding. We're now in, and we're now in Kenya. We, we expanded, and we have a school in Kenya. We have an orphanage in Kenya. We now have a church in Arizona. We, we have a church now in Pomona, and we're, gonna, we're, gonna, we're launching a church in Compton. We have two churches in San Bernardino. What is happening? We are growing. And everywhere we go, we bring improvement, we bring growth, we bring prosperity, we bring increase. That's what you're supposed to do. Right? How many believe that? So growth insights. How many want guaranteed advancement? Well, my marriage is not very good right now. That's okay. It's not supposed to remain the same. You can improve. You could grow. You guys could become more mature. You can learn how to be nice and kind. I'm going to give you three insights about growth. Number one, we were created to grow and desire growth. We were created to grow and desire growth. Growth is part of our original DNA. So we were created to grow and desire growth. In Genesis 1, it says, and God blessed them. Who did he bless? God blessed them. Who did he bless? Adam and Eve, the, the first original human beings, and said, be fruitful and multiply. This was the first words that God spoke over Adam and Eve. First command that God gave mankind before the Ten Commandments is be fruitful and multiply. What's so great about God declaring you to be fruitful and multiply, this is what he was saying, I command you to grow. And when God commands you to do something, he empowers you to do it. God will never command you to do something he won't give you the power and authority to do. God's not teasing you. He's empowering you. Come on. We can grow. We can be free. We can overcome. We can be consistent. We can be happy. We can be victorious. I command you to expand, to grow. The word fruitful, I command you, God bless them, be fruitful, multiply, means grow. God bless them, grow, increase, show fruit, branch off. 
The word multiply, Hebrew root, rabba, means to become many, numerous, to make large, abundance. I love these words. Your job is improve. Your job is to increase. I empower you to do this. You were created to grow and desire it. You don't start a business with a vision like, I can't wait to invest $100,000 and in four years shut down the business, lose my investment. I just can't wait for that day. You start a business because you're seeing, I could see this business grow. Right now, I don't have a lot of clients, but I could see us building this business and becoming wealthy one day, having employees, provide income for others, and I could see us becoming wealthy as a result of this business. No one gets married and just say, I just can't wait till we hate each other and get divorced. What you're getting married and you say, I, I just can't wait for us to get married so we could build a life together, overcome obstacles together, become better people, and eventually enjoy the greatest relationship I've ever had on earth. Grow. Someone say grow. Grow. Okay. The, so now our potential, and I want you to get this, and life destiny will only happen through growth. That means you're here. But you're never going to see the fullness of your life unless you grow. And just because you're here doesn't mean you're growing. You guys understand that? Just because you're here doesn't mean you're growing. You only grow through understanding and application. And someone say process. If you can't get through the process, you'll never get to the promotion. Oh, you got to write this stuff down for your own, come on, for your workplace. People say, where'd you get that from? The word. Oh, they're a church. And, and this idea, if you can't get through the process, you can't get through the promotion. There's a process of showing up and being consistent even in church. If you can't be consistent in attendance, it's a pre-qualifier for responsibility. If you're never a good follower, you can never be a great leader. How many of you guys understand this? Someone say Process. I remember at 12 years old, because I'm growing into my destiny, I was going to a church, and that church, we were going there for years, and that church never grew. I was in that church for six years, five years, whatever it was, and we had probably 30 people that came to the church, and after six years, it was still 30 people. And I, I remember... They, they didn't have someone to teach the little kids. So since they didn't have someone to teach the little kids, I want you to get this. Out of the 30 adults that were there, nobody wanted to take on the responsibility to take care and teach the little kids in our church the Bible. See, they were hoping someone would step up. Nobody stepped up. You know what, what, what they were saying is, I want to go to the next level, but I don't want to commit to anything more than I got on my plate now. You can never go to the next level and take you, until you make next level commitments. You, know what I mean? you cannot go to the next level unless you're willing to make next level commitments. It's going to take sacrifice to grow. So I remember my mother, I'm 12 years old, I'm one of the kids in the church. And my mother goes to the pastor behind my back. And she goes, I got someone to teach the kids. And they thought she was going to say her. And she said, my son, I teach him the Bible. He knows the Bible. And he could teach the kids in this church. They had nobody else. My mom volunteered me. So I... She said, you're going to teach. She didn't, she didn't ask me. She, but you know what she was telling me? I command you to grow. And you cannot grow without taking on more responsibility. Come on, that's enough for the price of admission. Right now, you cannot grow without taking on more responsibility. And higher levels of commitment. Next level comes with next level commitment. You guys got that? So I said, yes. I'm a kid. I'm 12 years old. I can't say no. My mom said, that this is what you're doing, bro. Son, this is it. You're teaching the kids. And I remember that week, she, was, she goes, you're teaching all the kids, every age group. 
And I remember that week getting prepared and I, and I prepared a Bible story and they gave me right around an hour with these kids. And for at least a year, I was teaching these little boys and little girls stories that my mom taught me. That was a process of growth, but I couldn't grow unless I went through a process. I was learning and growing into my destiny by committing to responsibility. Then I ended up having a Bible study. I, I graduated to a Bible study with two adults. And this was years later. I was now probably 19 years old. And I was going to another church. And the pastor says, there's this marriage. They have a really bad marriage. And I know you know the word. Can you help this couple? And I'm not even married yet. Can you help this couple with the word of God? And I remember going to their house every Tuesday for two years straight. And it sure looked like they weren't listening to anything I said. They actually ended up being divorced. My responsibility was not the outcome. My responsibility was take on the responsibility, do your best, and let the outcome up to lead the outcome to God. I kept showing up and I would prepare like I was preparing for 10,000 people. I would prepare hours, just like I prepared for this sermon, hours to be here to share. And God said, you've been faithful with those two. I'm going to now promote you to something else. Stop expecting promotion and you're not even faithful at the level you're at. Well, do you have a home church? No, I just kind of float around. You're going to have a float around life. You should be a tree planted, not a leaf that's blown with the wind. You cannot be strong if you don't have a church home, you don't have a pastor, you don't have a family, there's not an address to where you grow, you're not taking ownership, you're not taking responsibility, you're not being part of a, a discipleship group, you're not going through a process. Come on, you cannot expect graduation until you're able to commit to process. It's getting quiet up in here. But I'm teaching you things, I want you to understand. If I was teaching this at a success seminar, because business people want to learn how to grow, and they'll pay thousands to show up to hear success principles, and all success principles are found in the B-I-B-L-E. What I'm telling you right now is going to make you a greater leader, but if you listen, there's a commitment in this. Are you ready to commit to higher level commitments to get a next level life. You guys got that? So after that, I ended up being a youth pastor at this same church. I had a Bible study with these couple that didn't listen. But God didn't care about that. He said, you were faithful. So now I'm going to give you responsibility to take care of all the teenagers in this church. And I'm going to de develop you at a next level leadership. Now my promotion is greater responsibility. Great. See, the next level of life has less freedom and greater responsibility. Sometimes you think, as you're looking at the next level of people, because I can't wait to get there because it looks like they have an easier life. And this is the reason, the reason you say that you're looking at the rewards, you're not looking at the price. And you want the rewards, and it's great to want the rewards, but if you're not willing to pay the price and take on the responsibility and go through the process, next level life comes with next level commitment, next level responsibility, next level, come on, next level, next, next level pain, next, come on, next level process, and then you get next level rewards. The commitment is greater, but the rewards are greater. You guys got that? So when God says, I want to go next, I, you might be saying, I want, to go I want to grow to the next level. And God says, okay, there's a price for that. Are you willing to pay it? You guys got that? Okay. So now I'm a youth pastor for 14 years. And I, this is what I, how I learn how to deal with inner city kids. I go into the toughest neighborhoods in Fontana and I start busting in all the gangsters, the worst kids I could find in the hood, 
anybody that's willing to get on that bus got on the bus. And I remember it was really tough because while we're worshiping, they were doing gang signs to each other. And then the pastor, I remember being kind of rebuked. He goes, where are you getting these kids from? I go, right here, streets of San Bernardino. He goes, our, our, our congregations are scared to bring their own kids. I go, don't get scared. This is how we're going to reach them. Let's expose them to real ministry. And I stayed with them for 14 years, and some of those young people are leaders in our church today. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand through process. Be committed. And for those same 14 years, this is what also happened. I was a manager in the car business, and I learned management and leadership. And my responsibility, when it was all said and done, was to take failing stores and turn them around. So what they were saying is, your responsibility is to cause growth, and prosperity here. Why? Because I could as I applied God's principles. Don't fear. Come on, just practice the principles. Go through the process. Go to next level commitment. God created you to grow. You guys got that? Insight number one is we, are, we were created to grow and desire it. Does anybody desire growth in your life? Insight number two, everything that is healthy grows. Healthy churches grow, healthy ministries grow, healthy discipleship and small groups grow, healthy businesses grow, healthy marriages grow, to be more loving and unified, healthy bodies grow, healthy mindsets grow into greater knowledge, wisdom, prosperity, and gratefulness, healthy spiritual lives grow, healthy emotions grow to be more loving, kind, and peaceful, healthy finances grow. So everything that's healthy grows. Say it with me. Everything that's healthy, what? Grows. God created everything to be healthy and grow. That means we can be in this room right now and be dysfunctional or sick in our thinking. But I got good news for you. If you came in here sick, if you came here dysfunctional, this is a place for healing, restoration, you came here sick, but you could leave here healthy and growing. I'm, is this good news? Come on, this is a place, this is a hospital where God can heal you and make you healthy so you can start getting some progress. Does anybody want some progress? Well, we'll see if you come next week. That's it. Or just make excuses. Ah, it's too hot. Who, who would go to church? On 4th of July weekend, we have to get the fireworks ready. You would go. 4th of July is tomorrow. But right now, it's Sunday. It's time to worship. It's time to learn. It's time to change. It's time to change our lives. It's time to turn our worlds upside down. It's time to get healed, set free, saved so we can help somebody else out. Come on. Freely you receive. Give it to somebody else. You're here to get empowered. You're here to start thinking right. And you're here to become healthy again. So God created everything to be healthy and grow. Everything that God made, everything was very good. It was healthy and fruitful. It was good because it was operating according to the plan. He declared growth, fruitfulness, and production over all his creation, including vegetation. So he said to man, be fruitful and multiply. But then when he created the trees, the birds, and the and the seeds and the trees, he spoke over them as well. He says, produce fruit. Seed grow in the trees and the plants. He spoke over creation. Look what he says in Genesis 1, 11. It says, then God said, say it with me, God said. Let the land sprout with vegetation. Does, does that sound like growth and fruitfulness? He commanded the earth to sprout. He commanded you to be fruitful and multiply. Wow. Do you think God changed his mind? Come on, do you think God changed his mind? That's it. As we start taking on the word of God and said, okay, that's my identity, then you start realizing, I've been empowered to do this. 
right? It says, he let the land, he said, let the land sprout and, with vegetation. Every sort, every sort of seed-bearing plant and trees that grow. Trees that? Seed-bearing fruit. The seeds will then produce. You see these words? Produce and sprout and grow the kinds of plants and trees from which they came. And this, and that is what happened. What he said happened. One word from God that you receive right now can be the seed of a new life. If you receive it for yourself, this can happen to you. You can go from addiction to freedom. Come on. From going to hell to eternal life, from depression to joy, from hopelessness to peace to hope to faith. God is saying, when I, you receive my word, you receive my results. Wow, no wonder the devil fights so hard for you not to come to church. He doesn't want you to have any seed. He don't want you to hear what God says. Some of us are greater fans of CNN, Fox News, your political party, than you are of God. It's getting quiet up in here. This is what happened. This is what? The land produced vegetation and all sorts of seed-bearing plants and trees seeded seed-bearing fruit. Their seeds produce plants, trees of the same kind. And God saw that it was, but why was it good? Because it did what he created it to do. That means God did not create you to be addicted. God did not create you to be depressed. God did not create you to be hopeless. God did not create you to be hateful. God did not create you to be bitter. God did not create you to be a gossiper. God did not create you to be self-destructive. God did not create you to be an alcoholic. That is not good. And you're not being fruitful when you're under those definitions. I've created you to sprout. I've created to be fruitful. I've created to be free. I've created it with purpose. I've, and I've not only created to do that, come on, I want to restore that in your life. I've not changed my mind about you. If you'll just receive my word, it will happen. Someone say God power. Wow. God power. That's amazing. I can't change. I know you can't change. You tried to change yourself. You break every resolution you make every single year. By the second day of January. <laughs> Why? Because it's not willpower. It's God's power. What's going to change this city? God. What's going to change this city? Leadership. Godly leadership. I was talking to my staff today. I go, don't vote political party, vote values and principles. You don't even have to like the person you're voting for. Do they represent the values of the word? Because if you have the right seed, it's going to produce the right outcome. Come on. Amen. Come on. If they don't represent God and his values, what he says, you're voting for death. Non-production, lack of growth, and everything drying up. Amen? I love it. I love it. So he said everything was what? Good. Someone say good. You know what that word good means? It was healthy. It was beneficial. It was prosperous. It was fruitful. It was causing happiness and provision. I love it. You were created to be good. To do good to be prosperous, to be healthy, to be strong, to cause advancement. God will help you become what he created you to be. Let's give the Lord a hand. Come on, we could do this. We could make a difference. And the last thing we'll cover today is insight number three. This is easy stuff. Number one, we were created to grow and desire it. Does anybody want to grow? We learned there's a process to it. And there's responsibility and there's commitment. But insight number two, everything that's healthy grows. Everything that's healthy, what? 
Gross, right? So your best days are ahead of you. I've been married to my wife for 33 years. 33. And, and I'm not like making this up and I'm not saying this because I'm the pastor and I'm trying to trick you. But I love my wife more now and she loves me more now after 33 years. Our marriage is better now than it was when we first started. My best days were not my honeymoon. My best days are right now. Why? Because I've been transformed. I'm a better person. She's more mature. Come on. We're more loving. We're more kind. After 33 years, we've been coming. We're improving. We're more fruitful. We're more loving. We're more kind. We're more peaceful. Because when you do it God's way, you remain healthy and you keep on improving. Inside number three, and we'll end it with this. Everything that is not healthy does not grow. <laughs> Everything that is, you don't have unhealthy, if you have an unhealthy thought pattern, you'll never grow. If you have unhealthy habits, you will not grow. If you're not self-disciplined, you'll not grow. If you if you have unhealthy thinking and you you don't forgive people and you're bitter and you're controlling and you always want to take revenge, you'll never grow. If you're a blamer, you never grow. If you're always a victim, you'll never grow. Because your mindset is sick. If you're coming in here trying to judge me, you'll never grow. Because while you're judging me, there's one thing you can't do is receive the wisdom that God's trying to get to you. You can't judge me and receive at the same time. Stop wondering if I'm real because I'm not the issue. This is what's real. What I'm telling you is real. And this applies to everybody. I don't care. Come on. I don't care who's here. I know what I'm telling you. If it's unhealthy, it doesn't grow. Stop trying to marry unhealthy people and have a healthy marriage. Well, I'll change them. You ain't changing nothing. It's a bad tree. Bad trees do not create good. Well, I think, I think if I get married to him, he'll change. He ain't changing. Change before you get married and make sure he repents and becomes healthy because two healthy people produce a healthy marriage. Amen. Someone say get healthy. Stop being so, like, sensitive, like everything hurts you. I, I, been, I got hurt. How many churches have you been to getting hurt everywhere you go? Can't you realize you're the problem? You're too sensitive? All my bosses are, de are demons. Dr. Jekyll. No, you're probably walking around with a demon. And even if they are demons, don't you have enough love to deal with that demon? Come on. Okay, okay, okay. Do you need all kinds of really goody two-shoes people for you to even survive? You need to be able to get so strong and the power of God is in you so strong that you're so healthy, the leprosy doesn't God get on you, but the healing gets on them. Come on, give God some praise. Come on, you're here to get healthy and be a healer, not a victim. Now, unhealthy trees and people do not produce fruit. They don't produce what they're created to produce. They never reach their potential. When we are unhealthy, it always ends in disappointment. That means you still have aspirations to do better, but it never comes out better. The dream never becomes a reality because you're not healthy yet. You're not saved. You're not whole. You don't have God leading you. All of us desire to grow and be fruitful. But when we have unhealthy mindsets and sinful lifestyles, it's guaranteed to fail. Do you really think that you're going to smoke weed all day long and you're going to be like, I know, I'm ready to conquer the world. You can't, you can't even conquer a plant. A plant has power over you. Oh, I need the weed. Yeah, and the weed's saying, I got you. Your identity is a plant instead of God. You're supposed to rule over every plant, rule over every animal, rule over, come on, rule over every addiction, rule over that thing. Don't let that thing rule over you and make it your identity. You can't even control your sexual drive. You're like a dog. 
Oh, I just, I, I, I got to let it out. No, you don't. You know why I talk about this? Because we need to start talking about learning how to be sexually pure. Come on, and getting your body to obey you, and now you obeying your body. Come on, let's give God some praise that we get some healthy thinking, a healthy sex life. I could talk about this all day. We're going to lead it with this last scripture. Luke 13, 6. Then Jesus said, told the story. Who told the story? I've waited three years. And there hasn't been a single fig. No, wait, no. No, no. Jesus told the story. A man planted a fig tree in the garden. A man planted what? What kind of tree? So if it's a fig tree, what, sh- what is he expecting? You guys are so smart. <laughs> you guys are like doctors. And, and you, you say, well, Pastor, why are you saying we're so smart? Because as a society, we're becoming so dumb. Like basic logic, well, it all depends, you know, if the tree doesn't want to be a fig tree, maybe not. <laughs> the fig tree can only produce fig trees even if it wants to be an apple tree. You know what I'm saying? Well, I feel like a lemon tree today. You're still a fig tree, dummy. <laughs> Amen. This is logic. Like, we're, we're so illogical society. Like, we believe dumb stuff. Like, to believe evolution is dumb. Well, Pastor, don't say that. I believe in science. No, you don't. Because it's scientifically impossible for nothing to create something. You don't believe in science. You believe in fairy tales. Oh, here we go. I'm not going to get in. Pastor, you're offending me now. I love you. I'm just telling you the truth. Think about it a little bit before you start refuting, fight against basic logic. So he planted a fig tree in his garden and came again and again to see if there were any fruit on it. But he was always disappointed. Finally, he said to the gardener, I've waited three years and there hasn't been a single fig. Cut it down. It's just taking up space in the garden. He's just saying, I planted it to grow and produce. It's obviously not healthy. And since it's not healthy, I want you to cut it down. He says, cut it down because it's just taking up space. You know what that means? Everything that doesn't work one day must be discarded and defined as useless. That could be a toaster. Why would you want to keep a toaster in your kitchen that doesn't work? Why would you keep a vacuum that doesn't vacuum? And God is saying, I've called you to produce fruit, but I'm giving you some time to get it. I've brought you here and I've planted you in this world, in this generation to be godly, to be loving, to have a relationship with me and get back to your God-given identity and experience the greatest satisfaction you'll ever have in your life, that you're actually productive, that you're actually making a difference, that you know God, that you're full of love, walk in peace and have healthy relationships. I've created you for a purpose. But you're not fruitful. You're really being useless. By choice. And if you continue to be useless because you don't want to change, there's going to be a final day that judgment will be made on your life. And say you wasted your whole life. You must be cut down. All you did was breathe breath. And you never found your identity in me. You found it in addiction. You found it in your money. You find it in your, found it in your pride. But you were never productive. And the sad thing about it, not only were you not productive, all your branches in your life became unproductive. And that's your kids, that's your finances, that's your health. You're passing on unfruitfulness. The story doesn't end here. We'll cover next week how the story ends. But basically, the gardener asked for one more year to give attention to this tree to make it fruitful again. And I believe that God's giving us one more chance. 
It's not time to give up on your marriage, give up on your life. It's time to give some special attention in the areas you want growth in and start committing. Come on to transformation. Let's give the Lord a big hand. He's a good God. Let's all stand up. Come on. How many learned something today? Come on. We're in growth school. Someone say growth school. Now, next week, I'm telling you, this is great place to invite your friends. There's nothing that's been said today that won't say, like, that makes sense. That's what they're going to say. Bring your friends that are atheists, non-believers, and I guarantee you this, they're going to hear truth that's going to challenge their thinking. That might cause them to have a light to finally see Jesus and realize, well, I don't believe in Jesus. First, believe in his teachings. If their teachings are right, why not follow? Because following the right teachings is just following Jesus. <laughs> said, might as well. You tried it your way. It didn't work. How about doing it 100% God's way? Come the way you are, right? So before, after this service ends, we're going to have an opportunity for you to commit to another level. And maybe what you need to commit to is, is relationships and fellowship and sign up for a small group. There's two ways you grow. One is through worship, big worship like this. And the other way you grow, we work, you grow through intimate relationships. This is the idea. If you don't make an effort to get out of your comfort zone and build some relationships, you won't be here a year from now. So it's very important as we're giving you an opportunity to step into your next level of commitment and growth to get in a small group. That means this is a place that we take care of one another. We love each other. If you're in a hospital, they come and visit you. It's great. And this is a place that we grow, grow into leaders. This is how we grow. We study the Bible together. We pray for one another. Get in a circle so you can help them, they can help you, and you can make some friends. Say, Pastor, I don't like people. Grow out of that because ministry is all about people. I don't like that. Well, I know. That's why you need to grow. Don't just come to church, be part of the family. You understand that? So at the, you're going to get an opportunity. Do all you can, just sign up. Before we leave today, I want to pray with you. And it's just a simple prayer. I want you to think about this young man, Anthony, that got in a motorcycle accident this week. And he did not know, he just finished a graveyard shift at six something in the morning. And he didn't know that in a few minutes, He'd be going into eternity. He didn't know it. And, I, and most of us don't know the day that you will go into eternity. And this idea, if your life were to end today, are you saved? That means, have you been forgiven? Have you repented of your sins? You know what that means is, I realize I'm not living right and I'm tired of it. God, I'm tired of doing it my way. Forgive me. And it's what you do. Place your faith in Jesus. Say it with me. Place your faith in Jesus. He's the Savior. He'll forgive you. He'll set you free. He'll give you a new life. He'll give you eternal life. Give me eternal life. Yeah, I want you to get this simple, simple, simple. He who has Jesus has eternal life. He who does not have Jesus does not have eternal life. You might have religion, but if you don't have Jesus... You don't have eternal life. Well, how do I get Jesus? You believe in him, accept him. It's like open the door. Jesus, come in. If you've never had a day that you've welcomed Jesus into your life as your Savior and your Lord and make a decision, I'm going to follow you. You died for my sins. I don't need to live under this guilt and shame and bondage anymore. If you can save me, save me now. And God will forgive you. He'll give you new life. And you come the way you are. He saves you. He transforms your life. He loves you. He's not going to hear hard Say, Pastor, this is a question. If today were your last day on earth, are you sure that you're saved that you'd go to heaven? Because if you're not, you're one decision away. And this is the commitment that you're at to go to the next level. Commit, believe in Jesus, and commit today to follow him. Believe in Jesus and commit today to follow him. That's your first step to be saved. 
You're going to open your heart and let them in. Don't be stubborn. Don't resist it. Because what you're looking for is this. He's the only one who can change you. That's the miracle. Anthony, I prayed with him. I go, Anthony, call on Jesus. And I believe that God had me there at that moment. He said a breath in his lungs. And I believe a miracle happened. He did call on Jesus. And today he's in heaven. And all you do is call on Jesus. Right? Now, I'm going to count to three. Say, Pastor, that's me. I want to be forgiven of my sins. I want eternal life. I'm not sure if I die right now, I go to heaven. But I want to right now turn from my sins. Ask Jesus to save me. I want to open my heart. I want him to come in and make me a new person. Give me the free gift of eternal life. It can happen right now. One, when I say three, raise your hands. If that's you, I want to be, or I want to recommit my life to the Lord. Two, and when I say three, raise your hands. All this building. Three, raise your hands. I want to be forgiven. I want a new start. I want to, I want to give my life to Jesus. I, I'm tired of living the way I'm living. I see all those hands over there. Anybody else? Come on, you got to, this is your moment to commit. Raising your hand is your next commitment. I want those that raise their hands. I'm so proud of you. Will you give me the privilege and honor of praying with you? I want you to leave your seat. Come up here real quick. Come on, let, come up here. This is your first step of following Jesus. Come on, say first step. Give them a hand as they're making a commitment and they're going to another level. Come on, they're making a commitment and they're going to another level. This doesn't happen by accident. No one's going to get into heaven by accident. It's going to be a choice that you made. You can reject Jesus or you can, come on, you can or receive him. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand. Come on, somebody's son, someone's family, someone's brother, someone's sister. Come with your addiction. Come with your depression. Come with your failures. Jesus is the one that's going to make you productive again. Come on, this is your time to get healed. Come on, receive the healing. If you need healing, come up here. Healing of your mind. Healing of your marriage. Healing of your life. Come on, he's the healer. He's the savior. This is a moment. Say yes. It's on the menu. Ask for it. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand. Come on. He's the only one who can change our city, change our families, change our lives. You're welcome here. We love you. Love you. It's awesome. All right. Come on, look. Come on, church. Let's be grateful for everyone that's here. Proud of you, bro. What's your name? Jonathan. Proud of you, Jonathan. Jonathan's giving his life to Jesus. Let's give him a hand. What's your name? Bentley is giving his life to Jesus. Isn't that great? What's your what's your name, honey? Petra is giving her life to Jesus. Come on. She's surrendering. Come on. This is her day of healing, wholeness, salvation. What's your name, honey? Nicole. Come on. She's giving her surrender and everything to Jesus today. What's your name? Don? Don. Don is giving his life to Jesus with a smile. Come on, church, let's never take this for granted. Aren't you glad that you're part of a church where people are getting saved and filled with God's spirit and becoming everything that God has for them? Get ready. I'm going to ask you for this. Will you give us a year of your life? And I guarantee your life will never change. I mean, will never be the same. Give a year. Keep coming to church. Be consistent. And I guarantee you, at the end of this year, People won't recognize, you won't recognize who you are. You'll be happy you ever were, more productive you ever were, more fruitful than you've ever been. People are going to say, what happened to you? You're going to say, man, I accepted Jesus. He saved me, made me new, he empowered me, and now I'm finally making progress. I'm not stuck anymore. This is your day. I'm healthy now. My emotions are healthy. My relationships are healthy. My thinking is cleared up. Man, this is good. Let's pray. We call on Jesus. He saves us. Bow your heads, close your eyes. Give your heart to Jesus through these words. Say, Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I've done it my way. And I know I'm stuck. I've been addicted to wrong thinking, bad behavior. And I need you to set me free. I need you to save me and forgive me for all my sins. I believe you took my place. You were punished for all the wrong I've done so that I could be forgiven. I receive forgiveness for all my sins. And I ask you now, Jesus, save me. I open my heart and I accept you 
and I confess you as my Lord and Savior. Fill me now with your Holy Spirit. And I command every spirit of destruction and darkness and every curse, I command you now in the name of Jesus, I command you to go. I will be productive. I am victorious. And I am a follower of Jesus Christ. From this day forward, I'm already saved. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand. Congratulations. Your next step is to get baptized.